In this video, we'll look at an example of how gene therapy is used to cure disease. Gene therapy introduces clone genes into living cells, particularly to cure disease. More than 4,000 diseases involve a single gene abnormality. All the trials that are currently being carried out focus on genetic disorders that don't have any other cure. Gene therapy is performed in two basic ways. In the first method, somatic cells are removed from the body of a patient. DNA representing the corrected gene is introduced into cells in the lab. Corrected cells are injected back into the patient. In the second method, the corrected gene is introduced into a viral vector that can be targeted to defective tissue. The viral vector is directly given to the patient. A few other things to note about gene therapy are that it is very different from the production of transgenic or cloned animals. In gene therapy, DNA is introduced to correct a genetic defect in somatic cells, not germ cells, of a patient. Gene therapy is not used to produce an entire organism. Only a piece of DNA that contains the corrected copy of a defective gene is introduced into cells of a patient, primarily to help cure disease. Adenosine deaminase is an enzyme that metabolizes deoxyadenosine. The lack of this enzyme leads to the accumulation of deoxyadenosine and results in the destruction of B and T cells. These are cells that are part of the immune system. This leads to severe combined immunodeficiency syndrome or SCID, which can be fatal at an early age. Currently, there are three treatment approaches to cure this disease. First is a bone marrow transplant because the bone marrow contains precursors or stem cells that lead to the production of many different immune cells, including BNT cells. So if you take bone marrow from a healthy individual and supply it to a patient that has ADA deficiency, you can potentially cure the deficiency. The second approach is to provide the patient with purified ADA enzyme. This is oftentimes expensive and not very effective. The most recent approach has been to use gene therapy to cure this disease. One of the first patients to receive gene therapy was a girl who had this deficiency. The trial was conducted in September of 1990. During this trial, ADA deficient lymphocytes were obtained from this individual. The cells were grown in cell cultures in the laboratory. All of these lymphocytes carried a mutant version of the ADA gene, which was defective. Next, the cells were infected with a retrovirus that contains the normal ADA gene. Now, retroviruses are very useful in gene therapy in addition to other viral vectors, for example, adenoviruses. adeno-associated viruses, herpes simplex viruses, and a few others. These viruses normally affect human cells, causing various diseases. By injecting their genome into the host cell and using the host cell machinery to make more copies of themselves, this skill is taken advantage of in gene therapy by eliminating the genes that cause the actual virulence inside host cells in order to prevent these viruses from actually causing disease. The viral coat proteins and packaging are left intact in order for the virus to be able to bind and get inside the talk itself. The parts of the genome that are responsible for the virus to actually get inside the cell and inject its DNA are kept intact as well. In addition to this, the mammalian gene to be delivered to the target cell, which in this case is a lymphocyte, is added to the retroviral genome. The retrovirus is allowed to infect the lymphocytes that are growing in culture. 
the advantage of using retroviruses over these other types of viral vectors is that retroviruses insert their DNA into the host cell chromosomes. This will allow the gene to be passed on to daughter cells of these parent lymphocytes once they are injected back into the patient. So that is what is done next. The ADA corrected lymphocytes are injected back into the patient. As you can see in this image, the normal or wild type ADA gene has inserted into the host genome next to the defective copy and will be able to produce a functional enzyme, thus compensating for the deficiency. The data obtained from this trial indicated that from the day that the gene therapy was initiated, there was a steady increase in the level of ADA enzyme activity over time. This supports the benefit that gene therapy provides to patients that suffer genetic disorders. Other gene therapy trials are currently underway for many other genetic disorders, including hemophilia, diabetes, and blindness. Thank you.